Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Oh, we've got a fun one for you today. This has been requested. We've done it before in the past, but it's really easy to do and very effective as you can see. We've got a background image there and it's kind of scaling up. It's getting a little bit bigger gradually. And it's not affecting our content that we've got on top there. When it gets about 20% bigger, it's going to start going back the other way. And that's going to be a continuous cycle. We've got it doing very slowly over about 40 seconds here. So in this video today, we're going to show you how to do this. I'm going to write a little bit of CSS code, but as usual, I'll put that down below for anybody that wants to copy and paste it. Really easy to do. So I'm going to enable my visual builder. And just to show you, this will work on tablet and mobile. If I hit my little purple button, we'll switch to tablet view. Here, I've got it on a tablet. As you can see, it's shrinking back in there. And if I hit the little mobile view, here we've got it on a little mobile device. And as you can see, that tower is moving in there. Great. So let's get started. I'll put mine back on desktop mode. But I'm going to go to wireframe mode. I'm going to delete both sections I've got going on here. And we'll start from scratch. Flip back to desktop mode. When you start a new page, Divi's going to prompt you to put in a section. Or of course, you can add this to any page you want. So I've got a section here. I'm going to add a little row. In mine, I'm going to use a single column. This is going to be our little image. So I'm going to use an image module here. Click on the placeholder image there and let's add that same image as we added before great so we've got an image there but I want this to cover the full width of the screen and I don't want any gaps on the top and bottom so while we're in the image to make sure it's going to do this let's go over to design and sizing force full width because I want it to be full width when we make our little row full width too so I'm going to save this now in fact I'm not if I hover over here, you're going to see this crazy number appear. That's actually the title of the image. These are AI generated images from Night Cafe. If you want to generate some great image, it's a great place to go. And you can find that link down below there. But I want to get rid of this. I don't want to see this when they hover over it. So in the image settings, we can go over to advanced to attributes right here. There it is. Now, all images should really have an alternative text in them. And what that does for people with bad eyesight, it'll read that out for them so they know there's a picture of a space fist uh, or whatever it is you've got your picture with. A lot of people use that for keyword stuffing. I don't know if that's effective anymore. But anyway, I'm just going to put that old text in there. Great. Well, let's make this thing full width. To do that, we have to adjust our row. That's the green tab, the row. I'm going to go over to design and sizing. I want to make it full width. So I'm going to grab this width side, pull it all the way to the right. That 100% I'm going to copy, control C, and I'm going to paste it down below in the max width, control V. Or you can just type it in there if you want to. That's great. We've got our little image in the background there. And you want a fairly sizable image for this. I'd say a minimum of 1920 by 1080 bigger if you can but you want to try and keep the file size small for loading purposes so let's close that up now i want to take any gap away at the top i know there's a bit of padding on the section take the stands about there and there's a bit of padding on the row so i'm going to take it away from both so there's no gap top and bottom so still in the row let's go down to our spacing padding top i'm going to put a zero in there I'm going to hit the chain so it does the same to the bottom. That's taken a bit of it away. So the rest of that is in our actual section. So let's just save our row settings there. We'll go back into the section. Do exactly the same thing. Design, spacing, pop a zero in the top. Hit the chain. Great. We're buffered up against our header there and the little section below. Fantastic. Okay, if you want a big old picture like that, that's fine. I'm going to have my perhaps about 60% of my screen. So this section, I'm going to close up spacing. I'm going to go to sizing. Height-wise, I'm going to give it 60 VH, which is viewable height. So it's going to be 60% of the viewable height. Now you can't see any difference there because 
this is what they call overflow and that's our image module so the actual section is only about this tool but the overflow is making the image flow over to hide that we need to go to our advanced down to visibility we're still in the section here horizontal and overflow horizontal and vertical overflow we want to change both of those to hidden as you can see it's shrunk it up there obviously make it whatever size you want for yours now if that image is not really in the place you want it you'll notice on the back end when i hover over you'll see that bit of overflow come back there now i was just going to say that image if it's not in the position you want it you can scoot it up a bit to reveal the stuff down here rather than all the stuff on the top there if that's what you want that's not too bad for me i'd like to have more of this building though to do that let's go into our little image module dark to have for a module when we go into spacing again i'm going to use a bit of negative margin on the top you can scoot it up that way if you just hit the little arrow increment down you've got negative one now you can scoot it up by giving it a higher number let's say negative 100 and you see it's scooted it down let's do perhaps even a little bit more 150 something like that i've got more of my building hanging out there obviously adjust yours to taste fantastic so we've got our little full width section there that's 60 percent tall if i take my mouse off of it let's add another little section below now that we're going to scoot on top of it so i'm going to hit the little blue button to add a new section I'm going to use a regular section and here's whatever content you want over the top of it and i'd keep it fairly small because on tablet and mobile you don't want it larger than the screen sizes really so again i'm just for a single row of mine you can put two or three columns in yours if you want to and put different stuff in there let's just throw a call to action in i'll leave everything just as it is your title what you want the button to say and the content right here i'll just leave that as it is i'm sure you've got some real stuff to do on yours in the link just down below once we put a, a link in for the button the button will show up and there it is right there and always best practice if you're linking to your own site leave it in the same window if you're linking off site to somebody else's tab open it in a new tab that way your site's going to stay open great and i'm just going to shoot down to background here background is always under content i'm going to turn that into a black I'm going to click on the actual black field itself and this slider over here is opacity so you, might, you can kind of see through it i'm going to take it down to about 50 percent the reason it's going gray is it's good showing that white through there that way when i scoot it up over the top there you'll be able to see some of that image through there great well let's just save our call to action there and of course i want this over the top of our image here to do that going to go into the section the blue tab itself remember we made this one 60 viewable height and that'll be whatever viewable height it's on and we'll, we'll adjust this a little bit for tablet and mobile in a moment with our second section here i'm going to go into the design into spacing i'm going to give it negative 60 viewable height see what happens then negative 60 vh as you can see it's scooted it up on top of our image there i'm also going to give it the same size because if i don't our little section below is going to be hidden so again i'm going to close that spacing sizing wise i'm going to give it a height 60 vh also as you can see that little section has revealed itself fully now back to where it was and these are the same height on top of each other I just want to scoot this down a little bit so it's slightly more central to me so again i'm going to go into spacing i'm going to use a bit of padding top let's use i'll try 15 viewable height see what happens well, that's actually not too bad great okay if you're planning to use these on tablet and mobile i'll show you how you can adjust it let's go to our little tablet view if you haven't done it click on your little purple button so it expands here's a tablet view right there and as you can see that's not really working for us i need to bring it up a little bit i need to make this section deeper here so let's go into our top section as you can see it's still 60 viewable height which is actually tall enough so we need to make that image bigger 
Now, if you can't get to the image because it's behind our other row now, we can go to wireframe mode, get into our image that way. Flip it back to the view that you were looking at there. We need to go over to design and sizing. We're going to go to height, hit the little mobile phone type icon. If you hover up over, you'll see these icons appear. And instead of auto, let's try 60 viewable height. Not quite, let's try 80. That's going to work absolutely fine. Now that's working fine, but it has kind of distorted that image a bit. It's pulled it a bit too long. I'll show you a little trick to get over this in a minute. Let's, while we're in here, look at the mobile version. So I'm going to click on the mobile tab here. And again, we're on the mobile version here. We'll try 16 point. See what I get the 60 pH. Not quite. Try that 80 once more. Yeah, again, that's going to do it. Might take a bit of that padding away on the section above there for mobile view. That's actually fairly central for the tablet view. So let's flip back to our little mobile view. I'm going to go over here and do it. We'll take a look at the section that this is sitting in. I'll take a little bit of that padding away on mobile so that's just slightly higher. Obviously, that's up to you. And again, if you have trouble getting to it, we can flip to wireframe mode. This is the section I want with the call to action in it. We hit the little cog there, flip back to phone view. Over to design and spacing, where we put that padding on the top. Again, make sure you roll over, get the little mobile phone type icon. So we're on the right one for the right thing. And at the moment, we've got 15 viewable height padding. Let's take that down. Let's try eight viewable height. What about half as much? That's going to work fine. On tablet. I'm pretty happy with that on tablet. And then here we have the full screen. Okay, what I was saying earlier about if you look at it on the full screen, it has that nice image, the planets around. If we go to tablet mode now, planets have kind of gone a little bit oval because it's stretched it. And it'll probably do it a little bit more even when we go to the phone view. So we can get around that by going back into our little image module. Again, we'll go to wireframe. Open the image module. I'm going to go to tablet view first. And not a lot of people know this. You can actually have three different images in your image module. One for desktop, one for tablet, one for mobile. Again, all you need to do is hover over the dark writing that says image right there. Hit the little mobile phone type icon again. We're on our tablet mode. Just click on it. We'll load a new one. I've got one cropped for a tablet. The rest around planets again. And I've got another one cropped for mobile. So again, just going to click on that. And here's a taller one for the mobile. And again, our planets are nice and round. So it's not quite so distorted. Great. Well, it's time to actually create the animation now. We've got everything in place. As you can see, we've got this on the phone. This on tablet. And this on desktop. So while we're in the image, this is where we're going to write our CSS code. We go over to advanced now, where I'm in the image module. Custom CSS, the fantastic freeform CSS tab will let us write an animation or complex CSS, which is great to target the image itself. All we need to write is selector. I'm going to open and close some curly brackets. I want it to run an animation, which I'm going to create in a minute. So I'm going to say animation colon, then the name of the actual animation itself. I'm going to call it image grow. That's my shorthand. You can call yours what you want. It wants to be unique. So it's IMGR for image grow. I want it to run mine for 40 seconds. And I'll show you how, how you can change this if you want to speed it up or slow it down. I want it to be linear. So it's actually smooth. And I want it to keep going and going and going. So I want it to be infinite. Fantastic. Now we need to create 
this animation called IMGR. We're using keyframes for this today. Keyframes are almost like stop frame animation with video. You've got a bit of a timeline, our 40 seconds there, and you can decide what you want to happen with keyframes. So I'm going to say at keyframes. Then the name that we gave it, which is IMGR. Now I can over and close some more curly brackets. We can tell it exactly what it, we want it to do during that 40 seconds. So at 0%, 0 and the percent sign, let's open and close some more curly brackets here. I want it to be just exactly like it is. 0 is when the page loads or second one of our 40 seconds up there. So I'm going to say transform, colon, scale. Right at the end of scale with no gap, we put some round brackets. I want it to be regular size when the page loads, just as it is now. Regular size would be 1, which is 100%. I'm now going to copy this from the 0 to the first curly bracket there, not the second one. The second one's encapsulating our, our whole animation here. Once I've copied that, Control c I'm going to drop down, paste it in there again. Control v to paste. I'm going to drop down one more time. Control v to paste again. At 50%, which would be the 20 second mark of our 40 seconds up there, I'm going to have mine scale up to about 1.2%, so 20% bigger. And obviously these things adjust to your taste. As you can see, it's actually started animating already there. Then at 100%, end of the 40th second there, I want it to be back down to normal size. Now if you want to speed it up, Obviously, put a smaller value in here. If I change that to 20 seconds, you'll see that it does it a lot quicker. I like the slow effect for drama. And in some situations, the quicker one's going to work for you. And if you want to scale it up even bigger, you can do. If I put a 5 there instead of a 2, that will make it half as big again, or 150%. Like I say, you're going to lose a bit of resolution if it gets as big as that, but... Again, for some situations, that's going to work. I like mine as it was, so let's just change that back. 1.2 and 40 seconds for almost kind of Ken Burns-ish type effect. Just catches your eye as it's moving there. Fantastic. Let's just check that on tablet and mobile. I'll put this CSS code down below the video for anybody that wants to copy and paste, as usual. Let's just save our changes there. Here it is on a tablet. As you can see, it's rolling in there. And on a mobile, we've got it rolling in there as well. Perfect, just exactly what I wanted. So there you go, guys. There's how to create a kind of mock Ken Burns animated background image and have a bit of content over it. Let's just make sure this is going to work on the front end. I'm going to save my draft down here. And we'll exit the visual builder. That way now when we roll over it, you won't see that overflow spilling out there. And that's a really nice effect. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Or we'll make a little demo video just like this one. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. If you've enjoyed this today, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plenty of more great things coming up. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.